Hello, friends, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation, a ray of hope coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. Friend, let me invite you to pick up your Bible. Turn with me, if you will, to James chapter 1. Today we'll look at verse 9 through 11, and we'll continue our devotional series titled, Why Am I Going Through This Trial? Get a cup of coffee. Sit with me for just a moment. Let's have an encounter with God and His precious Word on this beautiful day. Well, hallelujah. What better way to get a new day started than a good fresh cup of hot coffee and spending quality time looking through the pages of God's precious Word. Well, friend, over in the book of James chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, the Bible said, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his way. Friend, I pray that God will add his blessings to the reading of his precious word on this beautiful day. Why am I going through this trial? Well, we learn, first of all, to produce real joy. And then we learn that we're going through this trial so that our life can produce in us an enduring faith. And then we learn that we're going through this trial so that our life can mature us as Christians. And then yesterday we learned that uh, we're going through these trials and testing so our life can drive us to a life of prayer. Now today we're going to learn that trials and testings happen to bring equality among the brethren. You know, my friend, when the poor man is tested and tried, it brings exaltation to him. It is a glory. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of the suffering of Christ, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you on their part. He that is evil spoken of, but on your part, He is glorified. Through testing, the poor receive spiritual riches, my friend. In Romans chapter 11, verse 33, the Bible says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And then over in Ephesians 3, 8, it says unto him, Who am less than the rest, or uh, the least of all the saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, Friend, God lifts the poor up. But what about the rich man? The rich man, when he's tried, it brings to him humiliation. Oh, how America could take this message today. Friend, we're on top of the world one day and at the bottom of the barrel the next. Could you say that God may be trying to use this pandemic to let us know just how much we need him? The Bible says if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Uh, It also teaches us in the Bible that uh, if my people call by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will heal their land, or will forgive their sins and heal their land. Trials come to the rich, And America has been the richest nation in the world. But trials come to the rich to keep them humble and to keep them depending on God. Friend, we've been like the church over in Revelation. We've shouted, I'm rich and have no need of nothing. But friend, we're we're wretched, poor, naked, and in need of everything. We need God. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they may not be high-minded. God don't want us to be high-minded, nor trust in their uncertain riches, but rather trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Friend Job learned this lesson well, and we'd do well to learn it too. 
When Job learned this lesson and humbled his heart before God, God rewarded him doubly. Sometimes God has to take away our riches to give us true riches. If uh, the Bible says over in Luke sixteen eleven, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that's money, who will commit to your trust true riches? I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have him than riches untrolled. This world's not my home. I'm just passing through. Friend, we've depended on riches too much. We need to depend on God, who is the true riches. If my people, called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. Friend, it's time that we humble our hearts in America and we'll see God heal this land. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this powerful devotion that teaches us sometimes we depend on our riches too much instead of you. And help us, O oh God, to always trust you and to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. For without you, we're nothing. Help us ponder this in our heart today. And help us seek your face and turn from our wicked ways so that you can heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friend, I pray you'll do just that and then go out into your world, make a difference in it. When you go out, let others see Christ in you. If you can't get out, pick up the phone, call, encourage someone today. Your life could be the only Bible some will see or hear from. So let others see and hear Christ in all you say and do. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.